Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we have Francine making landfall with Louisiana, Tropical Depression 7 in the main development region, and three areas of interest for possible development. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltibbets.com for Wednesday, September 11, 2024. The Black Arrow is Hurricane Francine with winds of 90 miles per hour, about to make landfall later on this evening with Louisiana. The Pink Arrow is newly designated Invest 94L earlier today. A very small compact system that could develop into a tropical storm. Right behind it is 92L in purple. And then blue is our new tropical depression, rapidly developed yesterday from Invest 93L into our new tropical depression and soon to be named Tropical Storm Gordon. So here's our vorticity map, the spin and energy in the atmosphere associated with all of our tropical entities. And then here we have our close-up view of Hurricane Francine as it's approaching the Louisiana coastline. Now this is going to bring a ton of rainfall as you can see here on the latest satellite uh, radar image and you can see all that rain that's slowly going to be moving its way up the Mississippi River Valley associated with the storm and those outer bands. Some of them could contain some tornadoes in them as they come on shore. So the winds now are actually up to 100 miles per hour as of the 4 p.m update as i'm making this video we have when it's moving north north it's moving northeast now it's 17 miles an hour so it's a little bit quicker but then you see it's going to stall out right in the middle of the mississippi river valley around missouri and arkansas and that's going to bring a ton of rain to the region over the next few days anywhere in those yellows we're talking four to six inches on the left and then the orange is six to eight inches Maybe even a foot of rain is possible in Louisiana and around the New Orleans area. So a lot of flooding, as you can see on the right-hand side of your screen, as possible, especially in that red zone. Now, as the storm comes on shore, it's going to be bringing the peak storm surge. So from Burns Point to uh, Port uh, Fortune, we have about 5 to 10 feet of uh peak storm surge to come through and then everywhere else from there less from there as you can see on the map so the key messages from the national hurricane center regarding francine are here on the left is in english on the right is in spanish you can pause to take a chance to read this here is our new tropical depression out near the cabo verde islands rapidly uh, started to consolidate that very broad area of circulation yesterday and it was designated Tropical Depression 7. As you can see here, we have winds of 30 miles, 35 miles per hour, moving west-northwest at 18. So compared to what's been stalled out here for a few days, this one is booking it. And here's the spaghetti track guidance model showing it should stay out to sea, not a threat to any land. And in terms of intensity, it's split 50-50 between staying a weak tropical depression or becoming a stronger tropical storm, maybe a Cat 1 hurricane on the top end. Here's our new Invest 94L. It's very compact circulation. As you can see, it's well-defined. Just a matter of will it maintain that thunderstorm convection, which is flaring up now. It's got a 10% chance of developing into our next tropical storm over the next two and seven days on its approach towards the Lesser Antilles Islands. Here you can see they could scrape by, according to the spaghetti track guidance models, of the northeast portion of them. Uh, but this one is rather on the weaker side at, with its small compact size. Might be able to briefly become a tropical storm before fading away. Behind it we have a little bit bigger but still tiny 92L. It's got a 30% chance of developing over the next two and seven days. And it too is forecast to follow the same track as 94L towards the Caribbean islands. And it too is on the weaker side, barely if it becomes anything, maybe a tropical depression at best. 
And then we also have off the southeast coast of the United States, disturbance three, an area of interest, as we have a potential non-tropical low forming from the frontal boundaries draped across this region. Uh, an upper level trough will move in and potentially spin up a low pressure system that could gain some tropical uh, characteristics. So a potential subtropical storm is possible and bringing impacts to either South or North Carolina. So let's use the GFS model, see how that's gonna play out. Black is Francine, purple is 92L, blue on the right side of your screen is Tropical Depression 7 and pink is 94L. Here's the upper level ridge over Francine, but that's not allowing for rapid intensification anymore as we're gonna have this wind shear to its north and west, keeping it at bay from developing any further. So it's gonna move in as about a 977 millibar low pressure system, and then the rest of our tropical entities are out in the main development region. Two days from now on Friday, September 13th, we see our two Invest 94 and 92L moving towards the Caribbean islands. Francine has moved inland and is now on its slowing down approach. And Tropical Depression 7, potentially Gordon, continues moving west-northwest in the main development region. Not seeing much strengthening from the storm as we do have it on the back end of an up-level ridge, which is where our two other invests are located, but they don't seem to be taking advantage of anything because they're not getting any stronger, at least on the models right now. Light wind shear for those environments. Just to the north of though, we do see that subtropical jet, which would keep anything from strengthening if they continue to move out to sea. And that's why we see with, at least on this model run, TD7 uh, struggling to strengthen as just to its north is that higher wind shear. So it's allowing that dry air to infiltrate some of that low pressure system, keeping the thunderstorm convection to the eastern side of that low pressure system. Now, if you look off the southeast coast of the United States, you see a big blob of green and then it trails uh, like a loop out to the middle of the Atlantic all the way up to Europe. That is our frontal boundary. And if we look at the next day on Saturday the 14th, we have, lo and behold, a low pressure system of vorticity's signature trying to develop. Thanks to that upper level trough that we mentioned overhead that's going to be providing that lift mechanism in the upper levels of the atmosphere. So then by the time we get to Monday, September 16th, it is now making its way towards the North and South Carolina coastlines. One of those areas potentially could see uh, a landfall from this non-tropical low. If it gains tropical characteristics, it could gain the next name on our list. With TD7, the lone wolf out in the middle of the main development region on this map five days from now. Up level environment, not conducive for it to go further developing, but we, as we see some of that wind shear starting to increase in the region, and that's gonna cause some dry air intrusion. But look behind it in orange, coming off the coast of Africa, another strong tropical wave. So by the time we get to day seven on Wednesday, September 18th, a week from now, we see that potentially developing rapidly coming off the coast of Africa near the Cabo Verde Islands as well, like TD7 did. So we'll keep an eye on it. Here's the European model showing pretty much the same thing, a little bit stronger with TD7. It's that model shows the strengthening of a strong tropical storm, maybe a hurricane out in the middle of the Atlantic. And if blink if you miss it, the potential subtropical storm that goes towards South Carolina. Here's the ensemble models showing where all of our entities could go over the next seven days. So we'll continue to monitor Francine and the flooding impacts it's going to bring to the uh, south southern United States. If we see any impacts from Invest 94L in the Caribbean Islands or 92L, TD7 if it becomes Gordon, and then will we see Disturbance 3 become our next tropical system after that. So Gordon's the next name on the list, which will likely go to the TD7. And then after that, maybe if the other two invest 92L or 94L don't get uh, developed, 
Disturbance 3's chances of becoming Hyleen are F that. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on the Cyphering Weather, so if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you knew more like detail with the breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.